tea is a great drink. Uh, it's a wonderful Irish drink, isn't it? It's, 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 it's a lot of you are drinking it tonight. <laughs> It's a very calming drink, isn't it? Come in for a cup of tea. Come on, come in and relax and have a cup of tea. It's a, it's a commitment to conversation. You're going to look, come on in, it's okay. Come on in for a cup of tea. It's wonderful, it suits us. And then we make the mistake. Coming over to America, we're fucking drinking coffee. We go mental, we all get fucking jobs and... <laughs> Nobody works in Ireland, no fucking way. It's a... I know, I see, I know you, your jobs are very important to you here in America. Every, every bookstore you go to, there's thousands of books about how to be better at your job. You know, the seven, six, seven secrets of highly successful people. Rich dad, poor dad. Everybody is loaded except you, so buy this fucking book. <laughs> you useless heap of shit. Can you even fucking read? We'll send it to you on tape. You get a great sense of job satisfaction in America, don't you? You finish your day's work and you feel good. Do you get the same feeling back in Ireland doing simple stuff? Opening a window. <laughs> <laughs> Letting the cat out. <laughs> nice and fucking easy. You know? We work so hard. Irish people are very proud of the amount of building work that we've done over the centuries. We built this city. We fucking built this city. Very proud of that. Proud of everything we've built, apart from the Titanic. <laughs> we don't talk about that as much. That's because the Titanic was built by Protestants. <laughs> Catholics that have built the Titanic, it would have eh the fucking iceberg. <laughs> Woo! I was working, I was working on a building site once in Barcelona, and we were building a hotel for the 1992 Olympic Games, and it soon became the tallest building in Barcelona. Now it wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> Initially, the Spaniards had only wanted a bungalow. We just got fucking. <laughs> Carried away. And you know the story of the Tower of Babel where these people were building such a huge tower that God got angry. He thought they might be able to see him. So he cursed them all. And the way he cursed them all was he made them speak different languages. So pretty soon the project fell into chaos. And that's kind of what happened in Spain. All these different crews started working with us. Dutch people and Germans and Italians and Portuguese and Spanish. And a Spanish guy slipped. He slipped off the top and he fell to his death. And every other crew took the afternoon off work, except for the Irish. <laughs> and the Spaniards got mad. They started throwing rocks up at us. Embalados! Malatos, matados! Jesus, they're matados! Malatos, matados! Matados! Yellow matados, malatos! And we were there, hey, fucking relax, relax! <laughs> you wouldn't throw us up a brick, would you? Fucking hell! <laughs> And then we saw that they were having a drink for the man, so we put the tools down. <laughs> because there's something about Irish people and alcohol, it just, it just suits us, doesn't it? <laughs> and we don't understand the American attitude to alcohol. Are you going out tonight, Tommy? <laughs> yes, I am. How many beers are you going to have? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. <laughs> I couldn't put a number on that. I don't know a small child full of beer. Oh, when I go out, I usually only have one beer, although I do remember one time I had two. But then, I went into this bar in Sacramento. Hello there, can I have a bottle of Miller, please? Do you have any identification? 
<laughs> I said my teeth. Because <laughs> that's how I'd be identified after I burned this fucking place down. <laughs> if I don't get a drink! <laughs> now look, I'm not... I'm not a very clever person, do you know what I mean? I, in school, I thought teachers were my enemy. It's only now I've realised that some of them were having just as much of a laugh as we were, but we were too stupid to get their jokes. I bumped into my old science teacher recently at a funeral. Ha, <laughs> Tiernan. Tom Tiernan. Do you remember the day I sent you down to Miss Quinn's room looking for her fallopian tube? <laughs> and the big innocent 12-year-old head near, so delighted to be sent on a message. I'll go ask her now, sir. <laughs> Coming back a few minutes later, she says she's using it, sir. <laughs> she's more than one, Tom. Ask her again. Okay, sir. She says she wrap around your fucking neck, sir. <laughs> Jesus, Tom, there's worse ways to go, huh? You die with a smile on her face with Miss Quinn's tubes wrapped around your neck. <laughs> so academically, I, I don't flourish in that environment. Like, and I have questions, though, that the academics haven't provided satisfactory answers for. For me, anyway. How come we're different colours? Look at the heads in us. Different colours. How the fuck did that happen? The academics will tell you where well, we all started off in the same place and we were the same colour. And then we moved to different parts of the world. And the part of the world that you went to made you the colour you are. Huh? So that makes no fucking sense at all. <laughs> if that was true then, it's true now. Nowadays, could you take a tribe of undisturbed Africans and put them on an uninhabited island off the west coast of Ireland and eventually they'd fuck themselves red-headed and freckled? Is that... <laughs> of course. It can be great sometimes hanging out with thick people, can't it? It can be a fucking relief. Admit it, your favourite friends are the thickest fuckers you know. <laughs> One of my best friends in school was a fella by the name of Richie. Richie, best friend was Richie. Thick as fuck, you know. <laughs> in boarding school in the west of Ireland. All right, Tommy, all right, no problem. Uh... <laughs> you put your head close to Richie's, you could hear water crashing off rocks. <laughs> Heroin would have woken him up. <laughs> well, it's a bit fucking speedy, this shit, you know. And because we lived in a religious boarding school, there were rules all the time. And coming from a place of such perfect innocence as Richie did, you sometimes come a cropper, you know. We used to have these fire drills. And we had to have the fire drills because uh, the whole school was made out of wood. So once a, once a term, <laughs> once a term, right, this alarm would go off. We were all expecting it at fucking three o'clock in the morning. We all get up in our knickers. Now we go up and run out of the school in our underwear because the priest told us that <laughs> that in a real fire, uh, there probably wouldn't be time to get dressed. Do you know? <laughs> You're better off practicing in the nude. Ah yeah. <laughs> and there'd always be there'd always be one priest trying to get you into the woods. Come on to fuck. Come on. Come on to fuck. <laughs> sure, it's not a real fire at all. <laughs> So one morning, this fucking, this fire alarm goes off and we all get up in our knickers and run out of the school over to the study hall, apart from Richie, who thought it was the morning bell. <laughs> so he went downstairs and had a shower and got dressed. And the priest is up in the study hall and there's one fella missing and he's going fucking ballistic. This kid needs to be taught a lesson. So Richie is hauled up in front of this midnight court and he walks in fully dressed and we're all standing there shivering. It's like a fucking, a collection of golems. <laughs> it's, it's the weirdest thing Richie has ever seen in his life. <laughs> and uh, the priest just fucking, the priest just goes for him. Ah, Richie! Good man! You decided to join us, did you? 
Fair play to you, Richie. Fair play to you. <laughs> Would you mind telling us where you were? Where were you, Richie? Where were you? <laughs> Before Richie could answer, the priest goes, I'll tell you where you were, will I? <laughs> you were burning to death <laughs> in the school fire. You're dead now. Did you know that, Rishi? You're dead now. Now, the metaphor of the whole situation is lost on Rishi, and he's there. What? <laughs> and the priest just goes for him. Am I supposed to phone your mother now? Am I, Richie? Am I? Am I supposed to phone your mother to tell her that her darling boy has died in the school fire? Am I, Richie? Am I? And the scene just becomes too emotional for Richie. His own death, like. <laughs> and he just shouts back, No! I'll tell her. <laughs> <laughs> it's better coming from me. <laughs> she thinks you're a fucking arsehole anyway. We are a country full of lunatics.